Good morning, my friends. Welcome back to the SWG Podcast. I'm Stephen Gray, and it's been a long time since I've put out a podcast. Ever since uh, COVID-19 started and the quarantine, I think we're entering or almost ending week seven. But right before uh, the pandemic hit us here in LA and everything got shut down, I recorded a really awesome episode with my good friend Attila Adam. He and I go back, way back, about 14 years. He and I met through music. We were both DJs back at in the, uh, the time that we met. And uh, we recently got together right before COVID-19 and recorded a long podcast um, talking about creativity, art, photography, and music. And um, it's a long episode, so it's going to be a multiple part episode. So I'm really excited to finally be releasing this. So I hope you enjoy it and stay tuned. Now that is actually is giving us a more advanced or a different version it, of, it's a, of, a, of a track. The digital, not just the digital and the audio, but the, the tools that come with it, all these new controllers, like you said, where they're assembling on the, the fly. Color, yeah. That I mean, and so the way I look at it, the way, the way I defend whether I'm still DJing or not is just like any tool, you can you can use it the wrong way, and just because somebody is mixing, yeah, the system does help me beat match it, but I still take a pause here. I'll cut it out. Back to order an espresso. <laughs> Those people should be shot. In the other one, there's that. There's a part where a truck passes, or no, an ambulance. No, no, in the last, another oh. one that you listened to, an ambulance passes by, and I didn't pause, so there was no way for me to chop it out. So, once that thing. But that dies, went. This one just. Yeah. This one stayed. But it's almost it's, ruined. It's almost dead. All right, it's God. dead. But but going back to talking about um, tractor, so I still do take pride in the assembly of the set because I, I actually, before I buy the songs, I start with an idea. And I express the idea in the visuals that I put. So like in my, in the new, especially, in, well, even in the old Night Law before this new one, but in the new Night Law series, um, I, I really try to think about what I'm trying to say in the set. And I find an image that really kind of embodies that. And if I can throw video in there just to have something in the background, but really, it's not just random stuff. I'm really looking for something. I'm curating some visuals to go with the audio and I do try um, to sometimes I'll buy 20 songs I think those are gonna be it and five of them are it and I, yeah. I scrap the other 15 and I have to hunt and sometimes it'll take me maybe another additional two weeks to put that set together until I found the story I'm trying to tell so that's you know that's how I try to maintain the integrity <laughs> that's so funny because uh, that you mentioned the story because I realized that all of my creative outlets, the connecting theme was story. Yeah. When I made music, I wanted to tell a story through my track. Yep. And I, you, and lo that's why I love doing sets from 9 a.m., 9, 9, 9, 9 p.m., mm -hmm. like the early sets, mm -hmm. because I was able to play more experimental songs. I see, I see, yeah. And you guys liked it too. I, yeah, I got a lot of yeah. compliment when you guys were like... Right. And, but it wasn't... Because the, like if you're at the peak hour... You gotta bang it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I hated that. I, I hated that one hour of like peak yeah, yeah, performance. Yeah, yeah. But it was so nice to uh, kind of like you know, start slower and yeah. build up. I remember the June, the June gloom sets that you, you did. Those at the time were definitely different than what was being played mostly at that time. Because I was looking at it as an overall picture. Yeah, you know, like yeah. The title too, it was just a mood that I was trying to set yeah. for my story. And I wanted to build it up and, and then used to let it just go. For but it's funny because that style, I still remember those mixes. That style is actually more in tune to today. Today it's more mm. of the more common that's, style. That's you know? nice. Man. It was, it was nice. a little bit ahead. As a matter of fact, when I, where, where we met back in 2006, me, you, Fingers, the whole gang, mm. when we were DJing at Blowfish Sushi, the sounds that I heard you guys playing was completely different than what I was used to at the time and it actually inspired a few songs that I produced because I was still producing back at that time. That's and it was a sound I, well, actually, the track was called Stranger, and mm. I called it that because the sounds that I was hearing in those parties were stranger than I've heard, and I specifically lowered the tempo and, and tailored this track to sound like the overall interpretation of what I was hearing. 
That's so cool. I mean, I think there's nothing better than inspiring each other, you know, and, and, and opening up, whether it's music or visuals or whatever, yeah. and, and, and to, to others for new interpretations. I yeah. think that's amazing, because that's what pushes art forward. Of course, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it, you're absolutely right. I mean, telling the sto having stories to tell through your medium and, and with your photography, I'm sure you're doing things like that because you're, you've got your your photography, and then you've also got the photography you do for others, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So the photography was, is interesting uh, in a sense because while I was DJing and I met you guys, yeah. I also put myself through film school, and oh, then I ended up. See, I didn't know that. Yeah. So my and I studied cinematography, and I think a lot of my photography is inspired by cinematography. Which, which school was that? As it is, I ended up going to uh, Cal State Northridge. Oh, okay. And and after I graduated, I ended up working for a commercial uh, a production house, and I ended up being a film editor. So I had visuals around me all the time. Yeah. And commercials are uh, as much as people hate it. Also, stories that are told in 30, 15, 30, 45, or 60 seconds. Which actually is a lot harder. It is because you have less a feature film. You have less you know, time to, exactly. to, to to tell the like story. Character <laughs> development, <laughs> jokes, whatever. Yeah. It has to be quick. Yeah. And if you miss it, that's why you have bad commercials. Yeah. But if you get it right, right, it's amazing, and that's why people respond to commercials when they are really well done. Were you doing a whole mix of styles, or were you doing like more on the funny side, or or on the so serious the, side? Or was it just so? It wasn't determined by me. It's the company. The company. Uh, um, it's called Go Film. Yeah. Uh, it was a bi-coastal company. Offices in New York and LA. Uh, we represented anywhere from 13 to 15 directors, and the directors had their own individual styles. Mm -hmm. what, what, what we didn't do was uh, we didn't do regional commercials, so we didn't get a lot of this, you know, car dealerships, whatever. Okay. It was all national branded commercials: Budweiser, you know, Chrysler, Mercedes, I see. Uh, okay. whatever you yeah, want. Yeah. And um, while I was working. Uh, at that office, also my photography slowly kind of snuck in. Mm. Um, I've gotten more involved with Instagram way before the masses were on. Yeah. Uh, Instagram when it started out, it was uh, more of a like a like a savior of Flickr. Like Flickr wasn't a social, yeah, yeah. But but that's right, yeah. But, but, yeah. but it was. Um, I remember when people didn't know what to make of Flickr and all that, yeah. Yeah, like Flickr was always good with photography, but there was no real connection. So when Instagram mm. came in, it actually started as a photo app, and there was a lot of conversations about it. So people were trying a lot of stuff. And This is before Facebook this took is, it, right? No, it's after Facebook. Oh, okay. Or, well, before Facebook. Before they bought it, yeah. yeah. So at the beginning, uh, it was a community. Uh, it had the Weekend Hashtag projects. And, um, so that's where uh, the hashtag started. So, yeah, that's where the hashtag. Before that, everybody called it the the, the, the number sign. Yeah. <laughs> before they were known as hashtags. And I think yeah. the hashtags were there before, but they were having the weekend hashtag projects. Which yeah. Always started with WHP. Yeah. Um, but it it actually played a big role in my development because um, now I had a place to share my photos. So back to mm. 2000 when I got that camera, mm -hmm. I shot a lot. I used to photograph my wife, I photographed my friends, I photographed my schoolmates, mm -hmm. my kids, whatever, and, and I enjoyed it a lot. But once I got the contact sheets back and mm -hmm. I, I developed the film, mm -hmm. it was a lonely experience. I was in my house looking at it. Mm -hmm. There's nobody else. I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? yeah, so, yeah. so it's not like I needed validation, but it was just like besides the people that were in it, I, I really didn't. What else are you going to do? Yeah. Share, what's, what's share next? with them, <laughs> right. and then it went into a folder, like a three, like a three, three <laughs> yeah. whole binder. Yeah, yeah. And they're still there, but uh, <laughs> but you know now with the phones, um, and I started Instagram using strictly my phones for photography, um, and I think at the beginning you couldn't even do it any other way. You, you couldn't you couldn't import anything else. You, it had to be on, on the app. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but now you had friends who yeah. saw it and they could talk to it. Yeah. They could say cool, whatever, thumbs up, heart, like, whatever. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't as out of control as it is right now where people are <laughs> like looking for validation and yeah. whatever, but yeah. it was a more genuine interaction. So that was really helpful to me because my love of photography developed again 20 years later or 17 or whatever, 15 years after 
I kind of put away those three whole binders. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And and Instagram also kind of paid attention. And in uh, in in a couple of years, they um, elevated me to uh, a suggested user. Oh. So they put me on their su suggested user list, uh, which is how I gained a lot of followers. Okay. Um, at that time, I thought it was important to have all the followers, and some people do still today because they are influencers. Yeah. Um, um, but to me, because I'm not a social influencer, it's really not that important uh, yeah. to me as much. Um, and most most of it is because it is when you are a suggested user. I feel like people were clicking on a follow button because Instagram told them that this was a good place mm -hmm. it was a good person to follow and now it would be different because I would get a follow based on my work not are, on based on a suggestion are you still heavily using Instagram I'm not as active on it okay. as I used to be um, it's just it's, it's just something that um, I kind of turned away from yeah um, especially after seeing how many people had um, developed problems through over usage of social media. Really? Yeah, I mean, we're talking about mental health. We're talking about, um, um, you know, what is it called? Uh, digital, digital decompress or digital, what is it called? I'm not sure. Um, I know. <laughs> when it come, like, I, I know the word. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people are talking. I mean, there's so much. There's so much, you know, buzz about. There's a lot of anxiety. Yeah. And, 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 and girls uh, look for validation about themselves uh, based on interactions and likes and. Well, um, especially the younger crowd mm -hmm. who are growing up with this in their hand, mm -hmm. you know. So it's 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 very it's a very cool way to stay connected if it's if the connections are true. Sure. Which I'm gonna say that if yeah. someone follows me based on suggested user. Uh, list that's not really a, a true connection yeah, yeah. Uh, but if you're you're cultivating your your, your friendships uh, you know one-on-one -on -one, whatever uh, it could be a really nice way of connecting with people um, but if it's not I think it could be also harmful because now you have strangers telling you you know <laughs> yeah. if your stuff is good or not it's true and whether they, it's your yeah and they, your, they, or pictures your food yeah. or your life or whatever yeah is there another medium right now? Here's the word. It's called digital detox. Oh, okay. So, oh well, yeah, people, I've heard of those. Yeah, yeah. They have yeah. retreats where you go. Go ahead. Yeah. I was wondering, is there is there a um, is there another platform that is for true art enthusiasts? Uh, I tried other ones. I think it was Ello, E L L O. Um, and it's just, it, um, it's not active. Yeah. So what I actually, what I'm doing right now is I ended up, yeah. What I'm, let's pause it. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, I remember what it's called. It's called Digital Detox. Yeah. Um, and, and there's the reason why people have kind of give, you know, given up on on social media and kind of thrown their phone away for 30 days or whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. I know some drastic measures, and I think actually that's pretty healthy. There were some people who got off their chosen social media channels, whether yeah. it's Twitter or Instagram, yeah. and they unfollowed everyone. Yeah. Everyone they were following, they unfollowed, they went to zero. They logged off, closed the app, and uninstalled it, so they wouldn't go back on I it. Now think about all the people whose feelings got hurt. Exactly. <laughs> but the thing is, this is a this is a good way for you to separate the real ones from the fake ones. Oh sure, yeah. For example, if I'm unfollowing you and you don't hear me, you don't hear about me in 30 days, whatever, and yeah. you don't know what happened, maybe you pick up the phone and ask me what's up. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get hurt about me unfollowing you and you're still there, yeah, you were meant to be. So when I come back and yeah. I see that you're still following me, yeah. that, so that that would be the person oh, you I would see. add yeah, back yeah. on, and that's the true connection. Yeah. So right now what I'm doing is actually whether it's a client or a new friend, I always try to meet face to face. That's what I'm doing.